It's a simple solution to a problem that still terrorizes some of the most vulnerable people on the planet. Cholera. The very word conjures up agonizing images of violent death and decimated populations. If left untreated, it's a fast-spreading killer disease, which can reduce a healthy person to death's door in as little as four hours and inflict entire communities with mortality rates as high as 40%. Two centuries ago, a disease called Ola Ota in its heartland, now better known as cholera, spread across the world from its ancestral home in the Ganges River Delta in present-day Bangladesh. Since then, it has continued to circle the world in a series of ongoing pandemics that have killed millions worldwide. What causes cholera and what makes it so deadly? Found in contaminated food and water, Vibrio cholerae is one of many pathogens that can invade the digestive tract, causing diarrhea and vomiting, which are the mechanisms the body uses to expel the toxins. In the process, the body also expels essential electrolytes and water. A severe case of diarrhea can cause dehydration, organ failure, and death. Untreated, it can kill a child in just a matter of hours. Acute diarrhea can strike people of all ages, but every year it kills about 5 million children under 5 years of age. Today, cholera and other diarrheal diseases are a leading cause of death in children throughout most of the developing world, but not in Bangladesh. They still come in two predictable cycles every year, but compared to 1990 levels, deaths from diarrhea in children under five have dropped by 97%. How did the country at the epicenter of the world's cholera nightmare come to lead the world in vanquishing diarrhea? And what can we learn from its success? This laboratory, established for research on the prevention and treatment of cholera, was placed in Dhaka, where the disease occurs every year. It's a story that starts in the 1960s, when researchers supported by the United States government joined international efforts to develop effective therapies for the cholera that claimed thousands of lives every year, especially in East Pakistan, now known as Bangladesh. The Pakistan Sito Cholera Research Laboratory is the predecessor of what is today called the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research in Bangladesh. When research started, intravenous fluids were the only effective way to treat dehydration due to severe diarrhea. But these were costly and difficult to administer, especially in developing countries. Researchers developed and tested an oral solution that could bring life-saving rehydration to the people who needed it most. Then came 1971. The birth of Bangladesh as an independent country sent millions of people fleeing across the border into refugee camps in India. It was the kind of situation where cholera thrives and an extreme version of the situation ORS was designed to address. The solution was put to the test. Among refugees treated using just ORS, less than 5% died. Later tests confirmed that ORS was safe for children and that it was effective for all types of infectious diarrheas. In 1978, the British medical journal The Lancet called this simple solution potentially the most important medical advance of the 20th century. UNESCO declared 1979 the year of the child. At the time, diarrhea was killing almost 5 million children in developing countries every year. Governments and international organizations joined forces to save lives, working to scale up the production and use of ORS in premixed packets. In countries like Bangladesh, this posed significant challenges. Without commercial production facilities, reliable electricity, or viable road networks, the government was able to provide only a fraction of the many millions of packets that were needed every year. Saving lives meant getting ORS to places like this, 
so that parents could give it to their children as soon as diarrhea began. In 1979, a young Bangladeshi NGO called BRAC saw only one way to achieve this. The idea was as big as the problem it was designed to address. BRAC would teach mothers across the country to make ORS at home. BRAC worked with ICDDRB to adapt ORS into a homemade solution that was close enough to be effective and used ingredients every mother had access to. They trained an army of young rural women to deliver the message. And starting in 1980, oral replacement workers traveled the country on foot, going door to door and teaching mothers one-on-one -on -one to make homemade ORS using salt by the pinch, sugar by the fist, and water by the glass. They also made sure those mothers understood when and how to give ORS to a sick child. By the end of the decade, BRAC had trained 12 million mothers to make and use homemade ORS saving lives and embedding the idea of rehydration in the consciousness of the nation. <laughs> Meanwhile, the United States Agency for International Development had launched a big idea of its own. They would use the market to save children's lives. In 1981, USAID's social marketing project tested a packet version of ORS on the market. And in 1983, Orsaline, Bangladesh's first commercial brand of ORS, was born. Effective marketing and promotion were central to its success. USAID funded advertising campaigns using radio, TV, and other media. Like BRAC, the ads focused on mothers and featured messages about how to treat diarrhea at home. The project also trained the informal drug sellers and medical practitioners who were the country's de facto frontline diarrhea workers. In free trainings, they learned how to manage diarrhea using ORS. Increasing demand for Orsaline and laying the foundation for a nationwide network of trusted pharmacies and providers. In 1990, USAID's social marketing project became the social marketing company. By the early years of this century, ORS was available even in the most remote village shop. <laughs> ORS was doing exactly what it had been conceived to do 50 years earlier. The price to save a life? Five cents. Today, Bangladesh uses more ORS than any country on earth. And diarrhea has dropped from the number one killer of children in 1980 to number 10. Many factors have contributed to this, notably efforts on the part of the government and NGOs to address the totality of child welfare. They've increased access to safe water, improved sanitation and hygiene, and emphasized breastfeeding, immunizations, and better nutrition. But the single greatest factor was the unique public-private partnership to mass produce and make available what works, ORS. Today, ORS is Bangladesh's gift to the world. It's a gift that keeps on giving. ORS is now a mainstream treatment for diarrhea around the world. It has saved an estimated 70 million lives worldwide over the last 50 years. But there is more to be done. Diarrhea kills 500,000 children every year, and the resurgence of cholera in countries around the world threatens many more. Thanks to Bangladesh, we know the solution.